Hi and welcome to our video for 20.2 electrochemistry. So, so far in redox we've been talking about different types of redox reactions and we've talked about how some of them are spontaneous and that is determined by the activity series, right, where higher up elements on the activity series will spontaneously replace lower elements on the activity series. So if we look at an example here, right, zinc plus copper nitrate, the zinc will replace the copper and will end up with zinc nitrate and the copper will get kicked out and it'll be by itself. The zinc, since it's higher on the activity series, it will replace the copper which is lower on the activity series. Okay, so the higher element, the zinc, is oxidized, right? Oxidation is losing. So the zinc goes from zinc zero to zinc two plus. It loses two electrons. The lower element is reduced. Reduction is gaining. The copper went from copper two plus to copper zero because it gained two electrons. So the electrons move from the oxidized element, from the zinc, to the reduced element, to the copper. Okay, so the next thing that we're going to have to memorize in addition to oil rig is red, cat, and an ox. That means that reduction is at the cathode, oxidation is at the anode because what we're going to look at is the actual setup of a battery. And that's going to be on the next slide. The other thing we have to memorize is that a salt bridge or permeable barrier, right? permeable means stuff can move through it, is necessary to allow ions to move to even out the charges. All right, so let's take a look at what that actually means. And here's a voltaic cell. Right? Basically, it's a battery. Okay, and all batteries are going to work on these general principles. All right, so this side here we have the anode, which is zinc, right, in red, cat, and an, ox. Okay, so oxidation takes place here. Okay, here's the cathode, so reduction takes place here. Okay, and since oxidation is losing electrons, the electrons flow away from the anode. Okay, and the load is just whatever you've connected your battery to, whether it's your phone, whether it's a child's toy, it doesn't really matter. Okay, but the electrons flow away from the anode and they flow to the cathode. Now, the reason why we have to have the salt bridge, the way I like to think of it, is we have to complete the circuit. Okay, it allows ions that are released into solution to move. Okay, so the way this works is, right, zinc is becoming zinc 2 plus. So the zinc that's on this electrode, okay, zinc becomes zinc 2 plus. And as it goes into the solution, this actually gets smaller because the zinc is being changed to zinc 2 plus, and the electrons leave, and they go through the wire, through whatever load there is, and these electrons move to the cathode where the copper is. And in solution here, there's copper 2 plus, that the, once these electrons move down to the cathode, the Cu2 plus is attracted to these electrons and the cathode's going to actually get bigger as the Cu2 plus grabs these electrons and makes more copper. Okay? And then the other ions in solution, right, the nitrate is able to move. So the nitrate NO3 minus moves across the salt bridge. Right? And two of them find this zinc 2 plus and make more zinc nitrate. Okay, so quick review. Red cat and an ox. Reduction is at the cathode. 
Oxidation is at the anode. Oxidation is losing, so electrons move away from the anode. Okay? All right. So, let's practice here. So, in this case, which substance gains electrons? Well, which loses electrons? Well, since zinc is becoming zinc 2 plus, right, it's going from neutral to positively charged, it does it by losing electrons. How many? Two. Lead, Pb2 plus, draw it down here, Pb2 plus, when it gains two electrons, it becomes Pb0, or just lead, and no longer an ion. So we need to name these reactions, right? If we're going to figure out which half reaction occurs at the anode and which one occurs at the cathode, we need to figure out what they are. So oxidation is losing. So the zinc lost electrons, so this is oxidation. Reduction is gaining. So the lead gained electrons, so this is reduction. All right, so to figure out which half reaction occurs at the anode and which occurs at the cathode, red, cat, and ox. So reduction is at the cathode, so this is the cathode. This is at the anode. Okay, so if we're going to draw this here, right, here's our container. Here's our salt bridge. Here's our anode. Here's our cathode. Here's the flow of electrons. All right, so the zinc is at the anode because anox. Red cat, so the reduction is the cathode. So that's our lead, right? And the electrons flow from the zinc to the lead. And what's the purpose of the salt bridge? Well, the purpose of the salt bridge is to complete the circuit to allow ions in solution to move from one side to the other. OK, so voltaic cells that we just looked at are basically batteries. There's another kind of cell that we have to know, and that's called an electrolytic cell, right? And it's based on electrolysis. Now, lice, or lysis is a word you should know from biology, means to break apart. So electrolysis means breaking or splitting up with electricity, using electricity to break something apart. So this is using electricity to force a non-spontaneous redox reaction to take place. So when you see the reactions that are not spontaneous, when we're trying to replace something higher up with something lower, right? So if we're doing something like uh, trying to have copper replace zinc, right? So we have copper, and we want to make zinc and copper ions, trying to get the copper to replace zinc, copper's lower, so we have to force this, we have to put energy in. All right, so this brings us to a couple of differences between voltaic and electrolytic cells, okay? Uh, the anode, voltaic cells, we saw it was negative, All right? And electrolytic cells, it's going to be positive, because we're going to have to be pushing electrons the wrong way, basically. And the cathode, the opposite also. Right, in voltaic cells, the cathode was positively charged. In electrolytic cells, the cathode will be negatively charged. Okay, Voltaic, we had those two half cells, right? We had the two half cells, a salt bridge or permeable barrier, and then the load, right? Because the battery, the load is the things you put the batteries into or connect the battery to. Yeah. In electrolytic cells, there's instead of two half cells, there's one cell and there's no salt bridge, and the cell itself is the load.
because we're, we have to hook it up to either a battery or some other power supply. All right. Common use is electroplating. So here's a common electrolytic cell. And here, right, we hook it up to a battery source. Okay, since electrons are negative, the negative end of the battery is where it's going to push the electrons, so the electrons are going to flow this way. As the electrons flow this way, they're going to get pulled out of the anode. When the electrons are pulled out of the anode, the silver, right, it loses electrons and becomes Ag plus and moves into solution. Okay? Now, in this solution, there's silver nitrate. Okay. And as silver comes into solution, it's drawn to these electrons, as these silver ions, I should say, come into solution, it's drawn to the electrons that are flowing from the cathode. And this object, metal ring in this case, is plated with the silver because the Ag plus meets the electrons and just becomes silver plating on this object. Okay, so silver is oxidized because oxidation is losing. So we have silver becoming a G plus plus the electrons that it's losing, which now are being drawn back towards the battery. Okay, here reduction is gaining the silver gains the electrons that are flowing and goes from a G plus plus that electron to become silver. So that's reduction. Still takes place at the cathode because red cat. And the oxidation still takes place at the anode because of an ox. Okay, so here it's an electrolytic cell, it's different than the voltaic. Here you have to use electricity to force this reaction to happen. And like I said before, common use of it is electroplating. All right, this, these are very difficult. We will go over them in class, but it is crucial that you make sure at least you come in with a bit of an understanding. So you do need to go back and watch this again. Uh, one thing that we will do in class is go over practice stuff like this. And if you can't answer these practice questions on your own before you come to class, it's going to make it very difficult to do the things that we need to do. All right, I'll see you guys in school.